So there are three different advertising types in Amazon. It is sponsored product, sponsored brand, and sponsored display. So most of us are familiar with sponsored product and some with sponsored brands. But let's talk about sponsored display. My name is Orkan Dusgun and I'm the advertising manager here in my Amazon guy. Today, we will talk about sponsored display ads, how we can utilize them and what do they really do. So let's, uh, before we dive in, uh, I have a chart for you that briefly explains how the sponsored display ad structure looks like. So we'll just go uh, from this chart and then we will move to the, to the dashboard, so to the advertising dashboard so that we can see it in action. Uh, so in the sponsored display ads, there is a bidding type, which is different than sponsor brand and sponsor products, which is VCPM, optimized for reach. So this means that you will be like the seller will advertiser will be charged per 1000 views per 1000 viewable impressions. The critical here is that the advertiser will get charged after one second of viewing the, the advertising. So this is something that needs to be used carefully. And other than that, it is it is just an it is just another bidding type that you can utilize. So uh, those bidding types should be tested and see which one is working better for you. But uh, we will go into details later on. To run a sponsor display ad, you also need to have a asset. It can be an image or it can be a video. So we will again go into details of those because the videos are kind of tricky. Uh, it's it's not like sponsored brand videos. It's, it, it is asking for way more uh, like specs for the video itself, for the frame rate, for the buffer rate and some other stuff. And we will go into details, but video is a little bit tricky on sponsored display ads. And the last thing that we should be having is the targeting itself. So what type of targeting that we want to do. So there is, uh, and, and then that, that can go into two different ways. So the one is contextual targeting. The other one is audience targeting, which will again go into details in shortly, but uh, with product tar uh, with contextual targeting, we are targeting the products. We are targeting the categories. We are targeting similar to advertised product. Basically, with contextual, we are targeting the products or product groups. But with audience targeting, we can actually target two different things. The one is we can do retargeting, remarketing. It can be for views and purchases. Again, we will go into details. Don't worry about it. And the second thing is Amazon audiences. So Amazon uh, has generated a segmented audience for us for, let's say, in market for um, people who are looking for buying a microphone, let's say. Those kinds of audiences that we can target. So now let's just dive right into the account itself. So when we start a new campaign, it is asking for for us to select the type, so we will go with sponsor display here. All right, so we'll just start from, from scratch. The campaign name, straightforward, but you always need to make sure that you have a well-written structure for the target, like for the, for the campaign name, so that you, you don't have to go inside and out to see what the campaign is about. So if you're targeting, I don't know, sponsor display, maybe you're targeting audiences, Maybe you're targeting in markets for microphones and other stuff. So many details, maybe you want to add your ASINs. So just have a structure for yourself. This doesn't have to be like, this is not a rule, but this is, this is let's say a best practice. And uh, for the daily budget, you can start uh, depending on uh, depending on your budget. You can, you can start however you like, but if you want to be conservative and if you want to test the results, then you can go with 20, 50, depending on your product price. So for now, we will just go with 50 just for the test purposes. So the ad group name, you can change it if you like. If you don't like, it's it's just a matter of choice. We go with the ASIN name usually, or if it's more than one ASIN, we can go with ASIN, like more than one ASIN. So here is the first uh, part that we need to make a selection. So it is the bidding type. Optimize for reach is the one that we're talking about. It is the VCPM, so cost per 1,000 viewable impressions. So you, the, the advertiser will be, get, uh, will be charged per 1,000 viewable impressions. 
So it doesn't matter if you get one clicks out of those thousand impressions or if you get thousand clicks out of this thousand impressions, which would be awesome, of course. Uh, so this is something that you can test. There are pros and cons to that one, but it is it is always better to, to test and see it for yourself. And for the optimize for page visits or optimize for conversions, it is most likely similar to sponsor product and sponsor brand campaign type because they are both cost per click CPC, meaning that the advertiser will be charged uh, per click. So, but the difference between those two is not still uh, still tested. Like it is, it is still blurry to be honest. So you just need to find out which one is working for you, depending on your product, your niche, and just go ahead and and start one campaign type with page visits one campaign for conversions and see what is working for you and not so we're like right now we are we're doing like we are creating campaigns for three of the like all of those bidding strategies so just see it for yourself and see which one is working for you on your account and after that we are moving to the ad format so the ad format is is something that we have to uh, I'm not going to say like th this is something that that we really need to use because it is it is the part where we are separating ourselves from from the advertising competition that's that's been happening because as we all know almost all sellers are also advertising meaning that if there are I don't know like 100 I don't know how many millions of sellers we have this automatically means that at least I would say and I don't know the numbers but at least let's say 70% of them are advertising meaning that there are a lot of advertisers just pushing for the same ad spots as we are so we have to make sure that we are different differentiating our advertisings as much as we can and this is the best part that we can do that because we can use a custom image or we can use a video again i will go into details of those ones uh, at the bottom so for now i want to go with video because video is something new with sponsor display it wasn't here like before a couple of months so this is something new and this is something that i that i really want to show and that i'm really excited about so let's just select one product and let's go with um all right let's go with this one the soap so we're still oh by the way yeah we're selecting the product you can select whichever product you want to advertise and then we are moving down and here we are so we're gonna select our targeting type and our targeting type will change the way we target so we are at this part right now we are selecting if it's contextual or audiences so here you need to decide if you want to target different products like the competitors or like the niche or category or if you want to target amazon audiences or retargeting remarketing using your product using similar products so uh, let's start with the contextual targeting the fit with the contextual targeting we are going to select the categories so amazon is already giving us some suggestions because we already selected two products and as you can see it is giving us that you can select bath soaps i don't know you can select a body cleanser so this uh we highly suggest you to oh first of all so as you realized it doesn't matter if you're selecting the contextual target like whichever you select you will see that similar to advertised product will be already added by default and we saw that this is mostly bleeding this is not converting well this is not working well but of course there are some exceptions to that but we usually see that this is this is something that is bleeding and running it which suggested to it will probably uh waste the money but of course this is this is something that you can try for your account maybe you can try with a lower bit you can see how it goes or you can basically remove it so we don't usually use it and if you're going to use it we definitely go with like super low bits to make sure that nothing is bleeding so let's remove that and let's start with some category targeting for test so again we can select the categories or you can do the refinements depend uh, so let's say you want to target i mean uh the, the reviews from zero to four stars we want to target the non-prime ones fpm ones we want to target let's say maybe we want to target a brand so let's say that your product is a direct competitor of 
of let's say I don't know let's go with CeraVe I don't know Bali soap doesn't matter so let's say that this is the direct competitor of us so what you can do is you can direct the target their products by brand using using the, the the category targeting that we have and you can even refine it however you like and again don't forget that the bidding type will change depending on the bidding strategy that you have here so right now this is cost per click meaning that we're bidding six dollars and 21 cents for this target per click so just keep that in mind that seems like the cost per click is super high here so and for the vcpm you will realize that let me also do that so uh, vcpm has a higher cost per uh, higher vcpm uh, suggested bid just because this is this is not the same as cost per click this is not a payment that you will be like that that you will be paying for a click this is this is the this is the bid that we are suggesting for a thousand views so just keep that in mind so we will go with cost per click again and uh, now you can also search your uh, own categories and the other thing that we can do is actually individual products so let's say that we want to target the products that that we know we are converting well and what you can do is you can just search you can go with suggested or you can enter list so what we usually do here is uh, we actually harvest the the the, the ASINs that we converted well from sponsor brand and sponsor product and we target those ASINs as sponsor display too. So this, this has been giving us great results lately just because we know that we are converting well for that product on sponsor product, then it means that we will probably convert well if we also target more positions. So uh, like you can just select which ASINs you would like to go with, you can, you can just test or you can basically go ahead and take what was working on your account and apply it on sponsor display. So this is the idea. And before I go to creative, I also want to show you the audiences part. So now we are done with this part. So similar to advertise product, we haven't used it. Category targeting, we just showed it. The product targeting, we also showed it. So now we are moving back to audiences under targeting. So the audiences, um has three different major uh, major headlines let's say so the one is amazon audiences the second one is vfs remarketing and the third one is purchases remarketing so the their names are self-explanatory but let's go one by one and before we go into that you will realize that there are already four audiences added here and those are automatically coming like the, those are default and they are coming from Two from VF3 Marketing, as you can see, they are added here. And two from Purchases Remarketing. So we will come back to that later, but for now, I'm going to delete them. And we will add them later manually so that I can also explain. Let's go with uh, Amazon Audiences, right? So with the Amazon Audiences, what we can do is that we can actually target people who are looking for specific products. And Amazon using the, like Amazon uses their algorithm to to segment those audiences. And as you can see, it is also saying that the exclusive segments to drive awareness and consideration. So basically, what's happening here is that Amazon uh, has their user database. They know what they're interested in. They know what they're looking for. What the customers are looking for, and they segmented those customers in a way that we can target them in sponsor display. So let's say that go with soap. So dish soap, but bathroom soap dishes, soap making supplies. I don't know. For example, you can assume that if you're selling an organic soap, maybe this might be a, a good target for you because if they're making soaps, you can assume that I'm just making this one up, by the way. Uh, you can also assume that maybe they are uh, into buying organic soaps to see how it feels how it feels to to have an organic one versus the one that they are doing i don't know i'm just i'm just trying to find some like for example you can go with bot soaps but this is more of a um, generic one because it it would also include uh, highly well-known brands like the soap brands like dough and everything so this is something that you can try and see if it's working for you or not and what you can do is you can just add them like this let's also add the 
Where's that? So making molds dies sense. Okay, let's go with this one. I don't mind. And this way, what's happening here is we are actually targeting, we are actually advertising this product for those audiences. So people who are in market for soaps making sense and in market for bot soaps. And as you can see, this is huge uh, potential reach and this is like a more limited one because this is this is way more niche than this one. And we want to make sure that it is as 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 niche as possible so that uh, your targeting is way more efficient. So just, I don't know, like imagine targeting men or targeting men who who also likes cars and also likes traveling and I don't know, into uh, Swiss knives. Then imagine how small this group can be versus targeting all men. So that's the idea. We want to make sure that it is as uh, as small as possible, let's say. And moving back, yeah, that's that's the audienceless part. And the other thing is that views remarketing. So with the views remarketing, we we can actually uh, retarget the people who actually viewed our product before, this product before. So let's say that people who viewed this product in the last thirty days. I want to target them. This is what we are saying. And with this one, and this is also something that is not working very well for us, uh, but again, you have to try and see if it's working for you or not. And you can also target this one. You're, you, now we are saying that I want to target people who searched for similar products, viewed similar products in the last 14 days, but not mine. So. Now we are actually showing them uh, and, and we know that maybe they haven't bought it yet. So that's why it might be a good idea to target them maybe in a shorter range so that you can go ahead and grab their attention if they are really looking for uh, the product that you are selling. So this is the views targeting and, and you can also do that for the categories like people who are looking for the bot soaps, the cleaner or whatever. And you can also refine them just like we did. You can refine them by the star. You can refine them by the price. Maybe you are selling it for $10. Then you want to target people who are selling more than $10. This way you have a leverage there. And the last one we have is purchases remarketing. And it is almost the same as Weaves remarketing, but the only difference is that we are targeting people who purchased our product before. And we usually use that on, on the products that are that have the behavior of repeated purchase. So let's say that you're selling, it's gonna be super classic, but supplements. And we know that each supplement uh, goes like, I don't know, in let's say 30 days. So what we can do is actually we can target them in 14 or 30 days and we can say that I want to target the the product that I sold, which is this product, and I want to target those people who bought my product in the last 30 days so that you can remind them that you bought this product. Let's buy it again because we know that your product will last 30 days and now you will probably need a new one. And you can also do the same for related to advertised products. Again, this is something that you should be test and see if it's really gonna work for you or not. And yeah, this way we can actually target the, like we can do the remarketing stuff. And this is the audience's part. And now we are done with the parts that we have. Like we, we have already structured everything here. But the only thing missing is now, as you remember, we selected video or image, right? So the last part should be the creative part, depending on what you selected. So with the video, you can see that you can add a video, you can add a logo and you can add a headline. So I usually like personally, I usually go with the video and I only add one video here and I don't add logo and headline because I'll show you why. So if you add a headline, so as you can see, the product is visible here with the price and title. But if you had a headline, what's happening here is the product image is gone. The title is a custom title now. I mean, that's good. Like if you want to put, if you want to point out something that is super important for your product rather than your title itself, then it would be a great opportunity to use that. And you can also add a logo. But for now, 
uh, we're not gonna add anything here so i'm just gonna add the video so i'm not gonna add an actual video but i'm gonna show you the what what we really need for the video specs because this part is super tricky it is not like sponsored brands you really have to make sure that you have those specs uh applied on your video or it's not gonna like you, you won't be able to run your video which is a little bit frustrating because the the videos that are working for sponsor brand now might not work for sponsor display so just make sure you have those ready and if you don't know how to do it you can just use a video converter for that and 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 you can you can select those specs on your video converter put the original video there and convert the video into the into the into the sponsor display video type and you can use like different converters but i'm using uh, like like not an affiliate or anything but i'm using a, a converter called handbrake which is an open source one so on it's on macbook so i don't know if if they if they're also available in uh, windows though but anyways so just use the converter that you are familiar with and convert your video into this one and you will have it and then we can launch the campaign and the other thing is we can also have the image again you can just launch it right away like this or you can add a headline which we highly recommend so when you add a headline oh not a headline my bad uh the image itself yes so we highly recommend adding a headline here so it has to be good looking one and it has to really like it's it's just an advertiser so the, like this is this is something that we need to keep in mind because it needs to be appealing for for the potential buyer so if you have a good image definitely use sponsor display uh headline but if you don't you can just use the one that's that you already have here so uh, then if you close everything up you can start the start the campaign without adding anything else even though it says an image you don't have to add an image you can just launch the campaign so this way we now have a sponsored display campaign which is targeting which has a cost per click bidding strategy which has an ad format of video or image which has this product as an advertised product which has now audiences or categories that we can choose from and which has a creative which is video or image again and that's all for our deep dive sponsored display video and if it's helpful please just leave a like and if you have any other questions or if you want to book a call you can always visit myamazonguy.com and we will see you on the next one thank you so much